Hey, I'm Adam with Edge, uh, doing something a little different. We've hit the big time. I'm in the studio. I'm here with Grant Blaha-Irath, who is also a technical evangelist. Now, you work here in the Platform Adoption Center. Yes. Tell me a little bit about this building. What do you guys do over here? The well, Platform Adoption Center we use for uh, training people on technologies they haven't released yet. Okay. So I have uh, four classrooms, about 30 guest offices. Um, I have uh, my own infrastructure. I'm not really, I have to be sort of the IT manager for this facility. Um, and we have about uh, 350 computers and, okay. you know, about 50 or 60 servers to keep everything going. All right. Now, um, you guys recently went through a refresh. You had some hardware that was kind of a hit, hit, hit end of life. You were ready to replace it. Yeah. Um, and tell me what some of your requirements were, what you did w to get ready for that refresh. Well, these are these are the machines that are used in uh, a couple of our classrooms. Okay. They have to be small form factor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, were, we were reaching a problem. Our machine, the existing machine is three years old. Uh, it was a Pentium 4 based machine, single core, two gigs of RAM. They're pretty beefy. They were maxing out the power in the room. So part of our consideration was I wanted to get a machine that was both faster and more powerful mm -hmm. so we can uh, do more work with Vista and Longhorn in the classroom and uh, as well as uh, consume hopefully the same amount of power or, you know, against my wildest dreams, less power. Okay. Right? I'm much used to in the hardware cycle. Every time you upgrade the hardware, you uh, have to yeah, it uses more power. Power goes it just up. Seems power goes up. Fast right? machines. It's the power's been doubling every three years, as with the processors doubling in speed every one and a half years. Okay, has been the normal thing. But an interesting thing is happening in that the power is now in decline. People are more concerned. Companies are more concerned about their power utilization. So it turns out I had some options. Manufacturers don't list their power utilization. Their real power utilization. They'll list how many watts the power supply okay. is, but they never talk about. There's no benchmarks right now. It's 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 still an infancy. The whole watching for green power utilization is still an infancy. So there's no benchmarks. So I had to come up with benchmarks. Uh, in this case, very synthetic. Um, okay. There's other methods we could use to find out real power draw in a real world situation, but I, I had to do synthetic testing at this point. So uh, I, I got a device, the uh, WhatsApp Pro from WhatsAppMeters.com. Um, you can also find it all over the web. It's a very common device. People usually use it to measure their appliances like their refrigerators, but it's great for measuring PC power utilization. Here it's actually measuring the power on our original system. Um, and uh, you can see that at just at uh, sort of normal resting, it's uh, running at uh, about 70 watts uh, of power, power draw. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a nice USB connection, so this laptop can actually record a session over time via the USB and generate some graphs, which I'll show later as well. Cool. Um, so, real simple device. We plug it into the wall. We plug whatever we want to measure into it here. Yes. And then we can see the real-time display of, of what the current power draw is of this machine as it's idling along. Yes, yeah, it's idling along. You okay. can see it was about 66. Uh, uh, I bumped the keyboard while it was sleeping. It was closer to 45 before we okay. did that. So it was drawing 45 in sleep mode. All right. Um, which in 2004, sleep mode was not very power efficient. Uh, they, the processors just couldn't handle it. So when you put this guy to sleep, he turns off his drives. Yeah, pretty much that's and it. That's it, okay. His drives are off and the display card's off and it stops drawing about 30 watts, okay. but it still consumes about 40 to 50 watts okay. in sleep. So it's not really great sleep mode. All right. Um, but that's the first thing I checked was, well, what's its sleep state? Because mm -hmm. machines spend 18 hours a day asleep, usually. Mm -hmm. And then I have some uh, applications, and the idea is to torture the processor and the hard drive. So let's really find out what the max power draw is on this thing. Yeah, the max power draw. Okay. Let me log in here. And there's really a couple of things that we wanted to do that with. Those were, we really want to crank up the hard drive, right? And right. crank up the CPU. Correct. Okay. The first application I got was one that uh, uh, is for uh, testing drive performance, but it also is a great tool for torturing your drive. It's called IOMeter. It's commonly available on the web at iometer.org. It's open source. It's maintained by Intel. It's an industry standard uh, or actually measuring drive performance and throughput. But in this case, I'm going to do something very mean to the drive in order to make it use as much power as possible and heat up as much as it can. So what I found was the most inefficient thing you can do from a power 
perspective, and just from a performance perspective, as it turns out, is do lots of sequential small block reads on the drive. It's a very vicious thing to do to a drive. Yeah. So what does a hard drive typically draw in terms of power? What If I've got two or three drives in a machine, what's, what's the power draw per drive? Well, they're usually close to about uh, a tenth of an amp of power, or on when you get down to the conversion, they draw one to three amps, which it, it tends to work out to be 10 watts of power at the okay. power supply. So you can look here, we've now jumped up to 78, and we're, we're, we're potentially climbing even higher now. Okay, so we've started the test now, it's, it's cranking away on the disc, and yeah, we're seeing about that, that 10 to 10 watt jump, jump to about 80 watts. A little hard drive, starting to make a lot of noise, because it's, it's being beat up. Okay, so now I'm drawing an additional 10 watts of power hard drive. Mm -hmm. um, now you can run this test if you have a system you're measuring has more than one hard drive. You can run it on all the drives and uh, be cruel to okay. the hard drive. And now I'm going to beat up the CPU. Okay, so what's, what's the best way to max out the CPU? The best way is to do lots of floating point operations and lots of memory operations. Okay. Um, and overclockers have known this for a long time, and, and one of the standard applications for um, uh, aggressively attacking a CPU is uh, from mersine.org, and they're generating prime numbers, gigantic prime numbers, so large that it takes about three or four years of millions of machines uh, to actually discover the next prime. Okay. So it's, it's a very torturous test, and... Uh, they realize that, and, and they've even, because uh, the uh, overclockers love it so much, they put in a torture test right into the application. And uh, here we're going to do lots of large, fast Fourier transforms. Um, and here we go, we just launched the torture test, and already the uh, unit has jumped up to, now it's at 130 watts. Um, I know from uh, past tests that it will... Uh, continue climbing. Right now it's just readjusting to the CPU draw. Mm -hmm. It will continue climbing um, up to about 140 over the next three minutes. And that's because, well, I mean, we're going to have fans that start to kick on now to keep the machine yeah. cool and some of these other things. Yeah, what's interesting is the hotter the processor gets, the more power it needs to do the same amount of work. Now the fans are running, the power supplies fans are kicking on. And, and the thing's actually getting quite noisy. You even have a decibel meter here. All right. Interestingly enough, we have a couple other gadgets here. Yeah. This one's your decibel meter. Because it was interesting, and these are all in a classroom. You don't want to generate too much noise in the classroom. Sure. So I'm going to stop talking, and we're going to level down to zero. So we just got a reading of uh, about 55 decibels. Okay. And uh, if I'm not talking, it in this room, there's no extra noise. It's a sound room. Right. So. So he's, he's climbing away. He's starting to get kind of warm, too. We've got even a little uh, temperature sensor here. Now, heat, I mean, indirectly, this is going to cause even more power draw, right? Because right. now we've got to cool the room if we've got 30 of these machines. So he's outputting about 100 degrees, air at about 100 degrees. Okay. Um, so that's 30 degrees above your ambient mm -hmm. temperature, usually. And, and, and you have to, that'll start kicking on cooling in the room if you get 30 of these going or more. Sure or any office environment, it contributes quite a lot to heat. There uh, we reached 110 on one of those points. Yeah. It's interesting, 112, it's quite a bit of heat. Okay. And uh, so this part of the torture test, and then of course we just stop the torture test, and it, all this time data has been captured by the PC. And we can see the power drops right back down. Yeah, power's dropping down again, PC's relaxing, it's like, oh, that was so hard. <laughs> drop down even more. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now we're seeing those those numbers drop down to about, you know, sort of 70 where we saw it before. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll even tell this thing to sleep so you can see how, well, in this case, in this machine, how efficient or inefficient uh, your sleep modes are. So now it's sleeping. It, it's, it's around uh, 54. It'll actually start to cool down around 48. Okay, so here's the old machine. Um, here's the new one that you replaced it with right beside it. Obviously, it's a lot smaller. Was that, was, was that a pleasant side effect, or were you trying to find something smaller? Well, I definitely was looking for as small as I could get, and uh, things have definitely gotten smaller over the last three years. As you can see, I, a previous machine was probably the smallest thing you can get, and they call that small form factor. These are now ultra-small form factor machines.